And again, I spilled tea on myself. Why do I keep spilling tea on myself? It's on my arm. It's, oh God, I got everywhere. What's going on, my pretty pandas? It's your Huggable Hipster here. And welcome back to another tea talk where in today's tea talk, we are having a special blend of salada tea mixed with lemon and pure, not cane sugar, but it's like the, the brown sugar that's really healthy for you. What's it called again? Sugar in the raw is the only kind of sugar I will ever ever put into my tea. Considering the fact that it's way healthier for you and there's no GMOs, no chemicals, or anything like that, that there is found in the white sugar, unfortunately. I'm not being racist. It's just, you know, you've, you have more chemicals in the white sugar. And today we have our special panda cup. Hi, panda cup. Panda, 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 panda. I'm going to pet a panda before the end of this year. I'm making that a goal of mine. I want to pet a panda. <laughs> so uh, let's get into the tea talk because, well, I mean, we got some tea to spill. I just showed you his booty. He's a panda butt. <laughs> Uh, Ariel, get your head into the game. Okay, what are we talking about today? Today, the first piece of news I want to share with you guys is some really awesome gaming news that Nintendo Switch is the fastest selling video game console in US history. Can I get an amen? Your homegirl still doesn't have one, but still, it's the fastest selling console in US history. And it's really awesome because I think before that, one of the fastest selling consoles was the Game Boy Advance. I could be mistaken, but this is one of the fastest selling gaming consoles in US history. And I'm really proud of the company. I'm really proud of Nintendo. It's absolutely phenomenal what hard work and a really, really popular name can do for you. And it's really interesting too, because the article states here that much of the appeal lies in the way the device can easily switch no pun intended, being a TV-connected console to an easily portable gaming device in a matter of seconds. It certainly doesn't hurt that Nintendo also released some strong games within the device's first year. The thing is, and that's the main thing that I absolutely love about this console, is that you can play it on your television, but you can also, whenever you're in the airport, just play it while you're waiting for your flight. I mean, it's versatile. It's amazing. It's something that's revolutionary that if you want to go to a friend's house for a sleepover, yeah, oh, don't have your Nintendo Switch right? think, oh cool, I can hook it up and we can play games, we can play some Mario Kart, it'll ruin friendships, but we can play it. Don't play Rainbow Road. That will get you exiled faster than you can say hobble up a schnabble up a ding dong. Oh my god. And I literally just spilled tea. <laughs> really spilling the tea today, guys. Nope, nope, I'm gonna have to clean that up. Holy moly. It's funny because I got a tweet from someone who watches the channel, Peter Turner. Peter Turner, hello, how are you, my dear friend and person who watches this channel? Uh, he sent me this, which I don't know, I would love to be able to edit GIFs into my videos, and I have yet to figure out how to do that. So I'm just gonna show you guys because it's Adele saying she, like, oh my god, I, just tea went everywhere. Like, that's a GIF of her spilling tea, and it fits perfectly. Like, a GIF of her spilling tea fits perfectly into my situation right now, okay? So thank you so much for the comment, Peter Turner. If you guys would like to be the next comment of the day in my tea talk, all you gotta do is comment down below or tweet me at Huggable Hipster something random, something glorious, something ingenious, something that is just a spur of the moment pun or act of silliness. Now, you know what's coming next, okay? All right, we usually talk about YouTubers next. We talk about what's in YouTube news. I covered the main story of what I wanted to cover for YouTube news in my uh, You Discussed Me Logan Paul video. And that's basically all the YouTube news I have really to say is that situation that's still happening. Um, he's under fire. The video was deleted. He issued an apology video. That's not an apology video. It just looks like you're reading off of a script for a minute and 44 seconds. He did not look sincere. He looked like he was forced to do the apology. And what is my hair doing? He looked like he was forced to do the apology. Like he didn't look like he was actually sincere. He was looking at the camera like, I'm really, really sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm rich and I'm really, really not sorry. Like that's the entire, that, like, <laughs> I'm sorry for the people who like Logan Paul. First of all, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But second of all, it's like, why? why? Why in your right mind do you think, make it A, that short. I feel like an apology video should have been a little, a little more, just a little more longer and sincere than that. Also, no apology is gonna fix what you did. And third of all, don't, don't, don't make it look like you're reading from a script. 
And don't apologize just because you have to. Apologize because you really feel like you need to. But enough about Logan Paul, let's just move on from the trash of the YouTube onto some better, more awesome news. So this is where we really gotta talk. This is where we really gotta spill the tea. We gotta spill the truth on the situation. Now, uh, it was brought to my attention again by a viewer and friend, Peter Turner, who sent me this article, which I'm really, really happy that you did, dude. Thank you so much. It is the new Alien movie, that is about to come out. Now, Ridley Scott says that the next Alien movie, wait for it, just wait for it, might not have aliens. I, I wish I could insert multiple, a, a multitude of memes here to express my distaste for the situation. Why would you make an Alien movie without putting in aliens? That's like saying, oh, I'm gonna put, you know, a Buffy movie as a remake, but I'm not gonna put vampires in there. It's the same thing. Like, you do not put an Alien movie out without doing aliens while I act anime in Kauai. If aliens is what you shall put, it is the aliens that shall receive. It just sounds wrong. In the article it states, and by the way you can find all articles I have in the description below, here that Ridley Scott's original alien movie was a groundbreaking horror sci-fi which introduced the world to H.R. Geiger's Geiger? Oh god, I'm probably pronouncing that way wrong. Horrifying Xenomorph, which quickly became one of the most iconic movie monsters of all time. Geiger's astonishingly designed extraterrestrial terror was literally straight out of the artist's nightmare and was brought to life by Nigerian actor Bolaji Badio. I did not even know that. Put in a recent interview with Empire Magazine's podcast, Scott revealed that if he gets the chance to continue his alien franchise, the film might not actually be focused on, that it might not be focused on the titular creature at all. Like, at all. Aliens. Have aliens in the movie. Don't just use aliens for the big bucks. Like, that's going to draw people in for sure, but it's going to make people extremely, extremely peeved that you did not use aliens at all. And it's frankly disappointing. That's like exactly what they did with Resident Evil. They didn't take anything from the first game whenever they made the first movie back in 2003. Nothing from the mansion, nothing with Jill Valentine. They created Alice explicitly for the purpose of the movie, not because she was in any of the games at all. That's why I said in my Resident Evil rant video, which I probably should do an updated version on, that if you're going to name a Resident Evil, stick with the story and stick with the universe that you were given. If you're going to name a movie Alien, Alien at all, stick to having aliens in it. Even if there is a, I don't know, a, 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 a Platuia Tudomorph, some crazy name of an alien, I don't know. Even if there's a small appearance by the Xenomorph, you know, you don't see Alien vs. Predator without the aliens, that's just Predator and that gets lonely. The movie Alien Covenant was a masterpiece. It was absolutely brilliant. The way that they introduced the whole beginning of the Neomorph and the Xenomorph really just made the story more coherent and the storyline just flow together a lot nicer and a lot smoother. And I feel like that was a really good prequel and a really good prelude, prelude if I can say so, yeah, I would say prelude, to the actual movie that was Alien. And I feel like that entire, like this entire thing should just stop with Alien Covenant. If he's gonna continue it on and make it into a movie with no aliens, um, I'm still gonna watch it, I'm still gonna review it, but don't expect me to be happy about it. At this point, I think it's just money hungry because you're using the name what for? Create a different, like entirely different movie franchise with the AIs. That would be amazing. I would love to see the character David take on this whole persona. I mean, David was creepy AF. Like, oh my God, it was amazing to see his acting, like the double acting that he did. Don't even get me started because it was a masterpiece, like I said. I'm a bit biased because I love the entire franchise, but I'm really, really hesitant about how this one is going to turn out. Also, speaking of movies, we have a new one coming out this year, and it, it's going to be a, a doozy because you guys aren't even ready for what this movie is. The release date is May of this year, and it is Slenderman. I'm so excited. I, I can't, uh, I, I just, I, I cannot wait. I'm excited. I haven't even seen the trailer yet. I think I saw like a short snippet of it before a YouTube video, and then it said Slenderman. I'm like, what? 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 This, I want this to be wonderful. I want this to bring to fruition all of my slending dreams. I, I want it to bring together everything that I love about the game. Hopefully it will do that. Hopefully it won't be like, oh man, 
why? Why did you do that? Why did you do this? Why did you make him wear a dress? <laughs> Can you imagine Slender Man in a dress? <laughs> Oh, sorry, that just got in my head. That's gonna be a lingering image for a little bit. So for those of you who are curious as to even what is Slender Man, Ariel, what even is this Slender who is man? Slender Man, for those of you who are not aware of the folklore behind it, it is this tall, lanky looking fellow who takes children. I, I don't know the entire story. I know from the video game, whenever I first saw Markiplier play it, I, that I just know the game. I don't know the entire folklore behind the game, which I probably should. But it states here that Slender Man is an upcoming American supernatural horror film directed by Sylvia White. Hello, Sylvia White. And written by David Burke. Wait, David Burke? Oh, okay. I th I'm familiar with that name. I don't know why I am. It just rings a bell. And it will be released by Screen Gems on May 18th, 2018. Now, the production started in 2016 and it was reported that Sony Pictures has started developing Slender Man based on the supernatural mythical character created by Eric Kunsten. I'm really excited about this. I don't know about you guys, but I know that whenever that movie hits theaters, I will be running as fast as my little hipster legs can take me. May 18th, you cannot come soon enough. Also, one thing I forgot to mention for gaming news, I will be playing Getting Over It. Mark has finally finished the game. I saw the entire thing because his raging is hilarious. And there's a thing at the end of the game where he didn't show us at all. But he was like, no, you guys have to play the game for yourself to unlock what it is. I'm like, frick fine. So for those who don't know, what getting over it is a... It's gonna be a hellish kind of a game because it's where you have to get over these obstacles and you have to use... You're, you're basically a guy in a cauldron with a pickaxe. I, I don't know, it sounds like something out of an acid trip, I don't know. You're basically you're trying to get over certain obstacles using your pickaxe and your um, half-bodied cauldron. Get up and over certain places. Now a lot of people have experienced rage with this game. A lot of people have experienced hunger, overuse of the word... shanky. But I can't wait, wait to play it. I believe it is $4.99 on the App Store. Also, did you know, for our random fact of the day, I thought it might be tea related. My tea is really good today, so we're gonna talk some tea. And again, I spilled tea on myself. Why do I keep spilling tea on myself? It's on my arm. It's, oh god, I got everywhere. It's on my pants. Oh, it's on the floor. Oh crap. Clean that up. Jesus Christ on a tit stick. Now, according to legend, tea was discovered in 2737 by Chinese Emperor Xinyun, known as the Divine Healer. Reportedly, he discovered the beverage when tea leaves accidentally blew into his pot of boiling water. So we can thank the natural order of the winds that led into his teapot. Even though teapots didn't exist then, it led into his pot. Also, we can thank China for creating tea, basically, in a nutshell. So thank you, China. Or as you would say in Chinese, Shishini. I think Shishini is a more formal way of saying it. I think casually you just say Shishi. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tea talk. If you guys like my face and what I do and want to be part of the next tea talk, be sure to leave a comment down below, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell because I make videos every damn day. Stay casually nerdy, you guys, and I will talk to you all in the next video. Be sure to drink a lot of tea because, um, you know, the Chinese made it possible for us. So, you know, be grateful. Peace. Yes. Ready, ready, ready.